When you come into the lab, what you should see is you should have a Mac workstation and you should have the IXTA set up something like this. Ideally, what we'll do is have the Mac station aimed over here and caddy corner uh, the IXTA over in the other corner, more like this scenario. Now, what you'll need to do when you come in is first of all, log into uh, the workstation using your user ID and let it get fully logged in and updated and all that stuff. It'll take a couple of minutes, so you'll want to get logged in. Now, this cord is already plugged in, if you see here, this USB cord that goes to the IXTA. What we're going to plan to do is have that not hooked in. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to log in, get everything set up, ready to load the software. Don't load the software. Make sure that the IXTA is plugged in. So it's got a power cord here. It's hooked in the back and the switch is on the little minus sign. And you'll know it's turned on because you'll see a green light right here, okay? What we're doing for the, uh, for the uh, tutorial this week we're going to be using this thing called a plethysmograph. It goes on your finger, and I'll show you that just in a second. But what you want to do is you want to log in, get your computer ready to run. And when it's ready to run, then hook in the USB. Okay, you want to do that after the, uh, the, uh, the system has loaded. Now, there are two ways to load the LabScribe software. If, uh, in, and one is guaranteed and one is possible. One option is if the icon is located, if you see the icon right here, you can use that LabScribe icon. Because I've already loaded the software in my desktop, uh, it, that's sitting there. But if it's not there, what you'll need to do is go over here to Finder, get the Finder uh, app, uh, app going, and then click on Applications. In the applications, what you'll do is you'll scroll through and LabScribe should be, it's in alphabetical order, that's right. And not Logger Pro, that's the Veneer system. We want LabScribe, and so we double click that. Once you click it, it should say hardware found, IXTA, blah, 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 okay? So you click OK. Now here is the part that you really, really need to pay attention to. This is very important and, and, uh, uh, and we want to make sure that we get this right. The first thing you're going to do is go over here and you're going to go to settings and you're going to load group. So we're going to load the group and then a window will pop up and lots of stuff going on here. Slide all the way to the right under complete settings, double click. In the right-hand panel, scroll down until you find this hideous file name right here, this IPLMV6Complete.iWorks group. You're going to cl click that, and then you're going to open. Now we go back to settings, and this time you're going to open the lab in particular. So this one we're going to do tutorial. We're going to do tutorial pulse. And when it does that, it's going to open up the background on the IXTA and the software that you received in your PDF. So you already have a copy of this. But if you ever want to refer to it, it will pop up here. Uh, it's just giving you the setup. It's not actually giving you the lab procedure. And that's one of the things that I don't like about it right now. But in any case, if you want to get rid of this, just go up here to Preview and hit Quit. Or you can hit Command-Q, whatever you want. And what you should see for this tutorial is you have the, uh, the, the pulse and you have the heart rate. So it's going to calculate the heart rate based on your pulse. Now let's go over to the other side. So we're all set with the software and you should have those two panels set up. Now the patient on this side needs to make sure that they have this plethysmograph hooked up properly. The white surface is what is called a piezoelectric diode. It, it, it sends a little electro, electrical current through the wire to the IXTA every time that little crystal in here flexes. Okay, so what we're gonna do, and I'm gonna set my phone down for just a second, sorry about this. Well, I'm gonna keep talking. I'm gonna hook up this plethysmograph to 
one of my fingers, either my middle finger or my ring finger, usually the left hand side works a little better. So it should look something like this. I have it hooked up and maybe a little bit closer to the end of my finger. So I'm gonna reset. So again, sorry about the camera there. You want it squarely on the pad of your finger, just like that. And it should be slightly snug, okay? The other thing, the last thing for the patient is make sure that your cell phone or any type of electronic devices are, are not anywhere near uh, the IXTA or any of the transducers that we're going to use this semester. I know that sometimes it will be tempting to have a phone or a computer or something like that, but uh, it is a sensitive electrical instrument, which means that it will pick up um, electromagnetic interference and our phones are a, a tremendous source of that. So turn off your phone or put it at least six to eight feet away from you when you're sitting uh, as a patient. If you're over at the, uh, at the terminal, if you're running the computer, it's not, a, not such a big deal. Uh, but you want to have those electronic devices at least six or eight feet away, okay? That will avoid any potential interference. So this room already has a ton of interference going on. We, we, don't want to, uh, we don't want to maximize it any more than we already have. And this includes eye watches or um, any type of electronic device that's attached to your skin. Okay, so uh, eye watches or any type of electronics uh, jewelry should come off your, off your wrists and hands uh, or body when you're doing these things. They will, they do send electrical currents through your skin and they will cause interference. So make sure you take all that stuff off. But here we're ready to go. So let me go back over, I'm gonna try to do this uh, just so you can see here since I'm doing this solo today. So I've got my piezoelectric thing here. One of the buttons that you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to is this record. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit it. My data is probably gonna be screwed up, but let's go ahead and do it. This is why we wanna do two people, ideally. So we're gonna hit record. Okay. The patient should sit very, very still. Okay. Right now I'm getting a lot, there we go. Once it's sort of settled down, now we have a nice pulse there. Okay, a nice steady pulse, and that's what we want to see. Now, if you are running the software, one of the things you can do, and again, I'm gonna screw up because I'm moving here, but it's still there, is that you can auto-scale. You see these buttons right here? There is one here, and we can auto-scale, and now it, 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 exact, it, it, it scales for the, the maximum and minimum, okay? And you can keep doing that. Okay, so we're auto scaling right here. We can also auto scale down here, though you shouldn't have to all that much. Now, the heart rate is a little bit screwed up right now because I'm moving around, so it's telling me that I have a 4,000 heart rate. That's not really true. It's gonna be more in the you know 90s, 100s because I'm running around, working a little bit. If I were truly resting and I were in better shape than I am, welcome to the COVID, I've gained my COVID-19, okay? Our heart rate would be a little bit lower, but since I'm talking, I'm holding my phone, my heart rate's up just a little bit, and that's not abnormal, okay? And you can record for quite some time here. If I were able to let it sit quietly, and let's just sit for a second. We can see that the heart rate's gonna settle somewhere in the 100, maybe a little bit lower as I calm down a little bit. And again, you can auto scale here. It's gonna flip around, especially if you're, if you're twitching with your piezoelectric uh, uh, diode, okay? So you see I'm sort of stable here, somewhere in the 100 range, and again, that's not uncommon. It's not uncommon. I would like it to be lower. I'm gonna really start working out again. I got some stuff I've got planned and I gotta get in shape again. But in any case, that's auto scaling. Now let's stop, okay? The next thing that you're gonna to wanna to familiarize yourself with is this button right here. This is your analyze, analysis button. We click on that and now we get these two red cursor lines. There's one over here, I'm trying to look for it. 
Yeah, there's one here, and then there's another one right there. So we have two of them. These are sliders, okay? So you can slide these things left and right. Very, very important. Like for instance, let's say we wanted to figure out what that value was at the top of this wave. We could get that to where that crosshair is right on the top, and we can see that the voltage is somewhere around 0.18 volts or mil, yeah, point, you know, so 180 millivolts. We're not measuring magnitude this week. We're not measuring that displacement. What we are measuring in this case is going to be time, okay? And so your lab this week is learning how to use these cursors to not only take measurements in the vertical plane, that's pretty easy, but to add function up here, like for instance, we wanna do time general so we'll do t2 minus t1 that's our time v2 minus v1 is another common one max min means all sorts of stuff but we're interested in time okay so time one and time two you can do those what we want is the t2 minus t1 and let's let's figure out our our pulse manually we can put it on two consecutive beats here and our T2 minus T1 is 0 0.620 seconds. So a little more than half a second. So if you wanted to figure out heart rate, you take 60, okay, divided by 0 0.620. You've got 60 seconds in a minute, and so you're dividing it by 0 0.620 seconds. And that would give you my heart rate, which is somewhere on the order, you know, not quite not quite 100 beats, you know, 98 beats per minute. You can, you can do that here, or you can do it manually. And there may be times that you're gonna to need to do it manually. This one has the software set up so it will calculate it for you automatically, but you will need to be able to move these sliders around, you know, from one place to another. Like say we were pretending this is an electrocardiogram. Maybe we need to measure from here to this low point, okay? By the way, you notice this little rebound here? We're gonna talk about that later on in the semester. In any case, we could measure that time and it's 0.14 seconds, okay? You could probably measure each one of these. So if I go over here, so I slide it to that one and I put this one intersecting the bottom, let's see what the time is now. Probably about 0.14 seconds. Pretty interesting, right? That's because that's a physical phenomenon, not a biological one. So it's very, very consistent. But that's how you use the software. The other last thing you have to do is learn how to do a screen capture. Uh, the, the most important thing, well not the most important thing, but, you'll, but um, if you wanna know how to do a screen capture, the easiest on a Mac and you're not familiar with Mac, just go to Safari, okay, enter the website here and say screen capture Mac. Okay, so we got Screen Capture Mac, I spelled it wrong, okay. And what we do is we, if you wanna see us take a screenshot, it is Shift, Command, the command is that little button right there, the little funky button there, and the number three. So when you do Shift, Command, three, you might hear the uh, phone sound. And I don't know, let's see here, I'll get rid of this. Let's do that one more time with a good one. So I'm gonna do shift, command three. And what it should have done is put it on my desktop. There it is. Screenshot right there. There's the new old one and there's the new one. You wanna find the right one. You see, I've got a bunch of old ones in here. Make sure that you rename these things because if you leave these up here, uh, they tend to remain the next time you sign on and they can get really, really confusing. So what I would do is give that a name. I would say tutorial, you know, I would, I would click on that, rename it, tutorial or something like that. And put your name in the file, okay? Like first name, last initial, something like that so that it's easy for me to know who you are and what screen this is. So we've got that now, we've got that screen capture and we can look at it and there it is. There's our screen capture, tutorial Dean W. Okay, very, very simple. Make sure that you're following the instructions today uh, for this lab. It's very, it will, 
you will speed up when you slow down. There's an old joke that nothing moves faster than a boat that's barely moving in the Panama Canal because when you try to speed up, when you get expedient about what you're doing, you will make mistakes and then you'll have to do them over and, and or you won't get your credit. Okay, I know it is tempting sometimes to uh, get in and get out, but make sure that you are doing it right by slowing down rather than trying to speed up. Okay, some of this stuff is ridiculously simple. Nevertheless, it's going to be really, really important that you do it right to get full points. And you can scale this stuff. So you're going to have some things about scaling horizontally. Okay, you can zoom in or you can zoom out really far. Okay, zoom out, zoom out, zoom out, zoom out until you get the right amount there. That looks good. Or you can zoom in. That one's, a little, again, a little too far. Don't panic. Just zoom out a little bit. Click it a few times until you have what looks like pretty good data. You can zoom back out. So you see what I'm doing here? I'm clicking this button right there. Sorry about the focus. All right, so practice this a little bit. Slow down. You can get a nice pattern here. Like for instance, let's say I want to find the right data. You have a slider down here at the bottom. Let's still we find some nice clean data. Look how nice and clean that is. Not that crap, okay. Slide it over until you have a nice clean set of data and you can auto scale here. All right, that's the vertical button here. There isn't one in the, uh, in the uh, data analysis above the data itself. So I'll slide, see I had a little blurb over there. So I'll slide that off the screen and then I'll hit auto scale again. Okay. And you can auto, you can see down here, that's a little bit, uh, if I can auto scale that, there we go. So now we have a nice look. That's when you wanna take your screen captures. When you have clean data, that is well scaled and, and all that. That's what we're shooting for. Remember that the goal when you're submitting data is not just to prove that you did it, but to do it in a way that's useful to other people. That's not useful. Let's zoom out until you have what looks like reasonable data. That's a little bit scrunched. I'm gonna start over. I can do that, come on. Didn't, didn't wanna work, there we go. Let's see if I can scroll that down here. Something nice and clean. Okay, well, I'm done for the day. The key is you can always go back and record some more. So if you want to go record more, you just simply hit record again, and it'll start recording. It'll pick up where it left off over here. You can stop again. You can go to data analysis. You can do all of the stuff that you need to do. It's a very, very useful uh, uh, system once you understand how to move around the data, there's even save, you can save as. And again, I would save it under the desktop so that you know where it is or under documents, okay? Desktop is good, you can save it there. I can say, you know, that way you can go back if for some reason you didn't do something. I'm gonna say Dean tutorial on the desktop. You can go back and review that data again once you've quit. So you can quit LabScribe. Okay. Now I've got the down here and I can load that data again. So I click on LabScribe again. It's going to load up. It should say hardware found when you load here, by the way, if it's connected properly. Okay. And I can go file and I can go open. Go to desktop where my save my file and there's Dean tutorial. Click open, and I've got my data again. So if you forgot to answer a question, something happened, you, you know, you had to leave or something and you just couldn't get it done, you've got that data on your desktop. Okay, I'm gonna quit now. Thanks for your time. If you have any questions, just reach out to me and I will talk to you again soon. See ya.